awesome. Indeed, indeed. Thank you very much, uh, Katie. One more time. Bye. Thank Bye, guys. You. So as uh, Katie introduced already, we have uh, the next speaker, Vanessa. And Vanessa McPhee, it is um, the owner of Well Builders Business a Developer Center, a strategic consulting, providing business development, coaching, consulting, insight, administrative enforcement, independently owned business and nationwide. And she's specialized in cultural analysis that is particular for the urban society. And she's been an entrepreneur for the majority of her life. She's been uh, doing promotions and marketing uh, uh, in the golden hip hop era. And uh, that she developed a scene uh, known in South Beach today. She is also an advanced into uh, um, advising and structuring the real estate transactions for investors since 2005. And in 2013, she branched off into development and administrative structuring for businesses, planning, documenting, preparation services. And in 2017, uh, through high demand, uh, of the emergency urban business. Her business expand, including to loan preparation, preparation uh, provision, uh, emotional coaching, and uh, for executives, and micro consultant services. So um, I will go forward on this, but I would really like to bring her up and say a few words on her own. What is the, who is actually Vanessa might be in her own eyes and what can be the service for you as your business and had the privilege and the pleasure to meet her in person. So uh, here we go, uh, Ms. Vanessa McBee. Vanessa, you have the stage. All right, awesome. So thank you again and thank you for, for, for such a wonderful introduction. Uh, even though that Katie is not here, I do thank her for her um, speaking uh, capabilities because she did inspire me to switch my focus on what we're gonna discuss today. So a little bit about me, I emerged out of the hip hop industry as a young person. While the entertainment industry was budding and most of the celebrities that you know were very, very young, we were the ones who were developing the South Beach environment with their um, Peter Thomas and uh, all of the rappers that you know and that type of thing. So my first business was uh, marketing and promotions in the entertainment industry. I evolved into doing real estate, uh, I also uh, graduated from FIU with a bachelor's degree in business administration. Um, I evolved into real estate and dealing with more structuring uh, for real estate investors to do uh, blanket type purchases, e entry and extra exit strategies, uh, formulating different tactics, things like that. And then of course, we know the fall uh, that happened in the early 2000s, late, um, I mean, I'm sorry, the late 2000s, early 2010s. And then we went on, I had a job, I, I owned that for three years. And then from Job, we have emerged out to be an entrepreneur since 2013. And my business model is to deal with the background of the business structure. A lot of people are doing what they do. A lot of people don't understand the administration of what they do. And out of need, we developed the, the uh, Wealth Builders Business Development Center here in Davie, Florida. And um, so what we basically do is we help people with strategies on how to maximize maximize their revenue streams in their business model. We help people with how to prepare to be fundable. There are a lot of people saying, hey, I'll get you a loan. But not a lot of people say, you know what, when you reject, when you're rejected or when you're not ready, who holds your hand to get you prepared for that moment? So we do a lot of uh, bank referrals and lender referrals and just community referrals for people who are here to be able to be developed into being fundable. And then we also deal with um the administrative support systems that a company might need to go from having an individual, um, you know, they being self-employed to really having an uh, entrepreneurial structure through developing, working with VAs or um, assistance in-house or things of that nature. So today we kind of wanted to focus, you know, it's a growth mastermind summit. So we do do loan preparation and this is very technical. 
We deal with everything from business plan writing, pitch deck development, um, you know, pitch building, uh, financial stacking. There's a lot of different aspects for your uh, fundability and what's necessary for you to be able to fund. But what I really wanted to focus on more than anything today is what the mentality preparation what's the mental preparation for you taking on a loan of fifty thousand a hundred thousand five hundred thousand a million dollars what does that mean to your mind are you ready to take in that type of capital are you prepared for what it takes for you to reproduce at that level what does it take for are you are you apprehensive towards getting the loan have you come to the per, the personal mindset that you deserve to have that type of capital. So these are the little things that we wanted to, I'm gonna to touch on today. So we're gonna to start today and what we're gonna basically go over is these five aspects. It's okay for you to borrow, okay? You deserve the investment, okay? You owe someone, okay? Presenting your case like it's your money and also borrowing within the good times. So we just went through a lending anomaly and it was the disaster funding related to the pandemic. And there was financial fraud of epic proportions. There was a secret service task force that was brought in to address the level of fraud that was taking place. People were uh, borrowing four times their or twice double what they were making in the year before. Some people were creating businesses the year before and had no track record. Some people were coming into half a million. I've had clients get up to a million dollars in just EIDL funding alone. We probably placed no less than $50 million in lending and loan assistance. So a lot of what was happening was supposed to be triage to an already existing crisis. Well, it's absolutely going to create its own crisis. We just have not been far enough down the pipeline to see the results. Now, I also expressed, according to Alan Greenspan, there were, which was the head of <clears throat> the Financial Reserve, there was a a time where people were, you know, where you don't really feel the effects of a financial hit for two years. Okay, so we're really now walking into the pandemic as of March of 2022, not March of 2020, where they declared a pandemic. So right now we're walking into infl well, it's inflation. It's it's actually deflation of the United States dollar. It's not inflation of the, the things around us. It's deflation of the value of money. And if money can be devalued, are we really talking about wealth when we're talking about money? Or are we really talking about wealth when we're talking about the currency of money or the circulation of the actual activity of money? We're here, we're entrepreneurs. We're here, we're business owners. We're here, we're here to be able to advance our capability and expand our horizons that happens through circulation okay not necessarily allocation so that that allocation doesn't stimulate circulation it's not really advantageous for you to take so one of our first questions when we're talking to people are what are you ready to borrow what is it okay for you to borrow i've had people tell me even during that crisis oh i don't borrow money I don't, I don't borrow money. You know, I want to be debt free. I tell you, that's a curse word. Why, why would you say that? You're an entrepreneur. Why would you want to be debt free? And the entire country is pro debt, for lack of a better terminology. We're in a situation where debt is circulation. It's the stimulation. It's also relationship building. So at the end of the day, if I borrow from Citibank ten thousand dollars, and then I tell, and I pay back that allocation on time with Citibank, I've built a relationship with Citibank. So when I go to Citibank again and say, I need another $10,000, are they going to reject me? No, because I have built a good relationship and reputation with Citibank. But if I say, no, I will never borrow anything. I'm going to bootstrap it on my own heels. Nobody is becoming a multi, multi, multi millionaire, or if not head edge of billionaire, or getting into two digit millions and three digit millions and going into billions without borrowing capital. 
It's against the principle of the way that money flows. In fact, by allowing money to stay stagnant, you cut off its circulatory energy. So be, it, it has no force of energy being in, in a mattress somewhere. It has a great force of energy being in a bank somewhere. Whether you benefit off that energy or not depends on where your money is sitting. But regardless of what, it is giving that cultivation of current energy, of electricity, that's giving it the energy to flow in and out of our economy and provide for lifestyles. It's not the cash itself that has the value, it's the what the value that you're giving that cash. So it is okay for you to borrow money entrepreneurs. In fact, there are going to be times where you would wish that that capital is available to you because there are going to be opportunities that you can take advantage of if you have capital. If there's also points where you have to deal with emergency situations. How are you going to address emergency situations? Over 400,000 businesses went down in the pandemic with the majority of those being in food service and hospitality. How were they able to mitigate that? They couldn't because they did not have the preparation in place to be able to do so. Okay, so it's okay to borrow entrepreneurs. That's a launching pad for you. You're not borrowing money to go buy Gucci purses. I have no problem with Gucci. I have no problem with any of the, of the, the designers. I love designers. But at the end of the day, it's still not what you're doing. You're not borrowing for consumption. You're borrowing to have more capacity for reproduction. The bigger your capacity for reproduction, the more you will reproduce out of, the, out of that same situation. A human has one baby. Dogs have five or six children. Those more capacity for reproduction, therefore, there is more reproduced out of that particular situation. Okay? So now we're going into what you deserve. You deserve, you have an epic idea. Okay? You may not have been already a multimillionaire. You may not be a thousandaire. You may be a just be just over broken air, but it doesn't mean that that idea does not deserve to be invested into. And an investment is not just monetary capital. It's also the capital of time. So just because you have not had a massive amount of money to to, to capitalize your business does not mean it is not worthy for another person well presented to come in and say, you know what, you have an excellent idea. The world will be better with you involved. And what can we do to assist you in bringing a small thing to a big thing? Shark Tank was was excellent at this. The first question that they would let you do your whole presentation. Oh yeah, I have a I have a super bug uh, uh, spray that'll never have another bite on your body again in your whole life, and you just wash it at one time. So the first thing they ask you is, how many did you sell? What is the microbial of your life? What is the microbial of you as an entrepreneur? What have you done that's circulatory? I believe in economic circulation. And that's one thing. I come from an urban community with urban limitations from mentality. And so we're new to the entire world of entrepreneurship. So you're seeing there's a lot of money grabs. It's a lot of money. Oh, we, there's no money limitations whatsoever. We're going through money like it's going out of style. What we do have a limitation on is equity is building wealth, is understanding institution, is establishing ourselves through the money that we're obtaining. And the reason why is because we're not clear on what that means and we don't understand where we're going with that. So you deserve for a person to be able to come into your world and invest in what it is that you have and you're bringing to the forefront because your creativity is important to the world's flow. Okay, so this this is when you walk into a bank or you walk into a pitch meeting, walk into that meeting with the confidence of knowing I deserve whatever it is that's offered to me today. I deserve to have all the capital necessary for us to be able to evolve and to grow and to expand as a business and be able to provide more people the benefit that we're able to put on the table. Okay. Then the next thing is it is that you owe somebody now. Taking on capital 
means that you are about to walk into having credit building with somebody. And I am not talking about we're going to go and get credit repair and put on AUs and all of the rest of the shucking and jiving that people do to be able to build a quote unquote credit profile to put them in position to borrow. I am talking about being an equitable borrower. I'm talking about when grandma leave, leave you the money. She don't have a document. She don't have a paper. That is your grandmother. She gave you a thousand dollars. Are you going to run off into the wild blue yonder with her thousand dollars? Are you going to be equitable and be in your your mind ready to borrow that type of money and then pay it back diligently and on time, even if it means self-sacrifice, even if it means that you can't do what you propose that you want to do with that extra money and you're able to be equitable to, to people say, okay, we want to do credit building and we want to build credit. And I understand that. OK, and I understand the credit profile and I understand the limitations and I understand that things happen in our history. OK, but if you borrow and you pay back diligently, you are building credit with a lender, a person, an individual, an entity that will believe in your forward motion. They might you might be selling French fried uh, ice cream cones. They don't want any French. We don't care. The only thing that they know is that you are an equitable borrower. So I am willing to be able to invest in you and take a bet that if I give you this capital, you will reproduce with that capital and bring it back diligently. Not that we're going to hide it, not that we're going to hold it, because you don't take on money unless you have thought about what am I going to do with this money as an entrepreneur that is going to get me more money on this money. We call it a funding implementation plan. What is your implementation for this capital? What are you going to do with the money? That's my number one question, because we deal in the alternative financing space. I, there are a limited people in the country that can pull off what we can pull off. And that's just the honest truth. And it's because of the relationships that we built and all of the things that have been outpoured and outreach with all of the things that have been presented to us. Think about right now, we are post pandemic. Do you understand that the SBA will be your last resort to being able to borrow money in this environment? The SBA will have to back almost every dollar that you borrow from a bank. A bank is not even, they are not considering you without SBA financing, without asset-based financing, okay, or personal credit-based financing without having the SBA's backing involved. That's that. Unless you're making $100,000 a month or better. So they don't want to hear from the small business on what do we do? What happens if there's a secondary crisis? We have a pandemic running through our world right now. What are we doing to be prepared in having preparation, readiness to fund, the preparation of capital? OK, the preparation, having capital resources. I have another one. People come to me and say, Vanessa, why are you trying to get me to take out a loan when I don't need any money? I have heard that talk spoken to me. Now, how is it that you don't need any money, but Google needs money, Starbucks needs money, uh, uh, Amazon needs money, Walmart needs, they need money. You, for some reason, have gotten into some way in your mind that you don't need to borrow. So what happens when it's time for you to fall? Who do you call? Who can you reach out to? Who, who trusts that you will be a person of your word and your moral value to be able to be ready to fund? So how many credit cards are in the average person's account? Hit the chat real quick. How many credit cards do we have? You understand? I have six. Why do I have six? Not because I personally need to move six cards. There you go. Tabitha has five. Where are we? What, what, how many cards do we have? And let's be honest, because one thing that we are here at Wealth Builders Business Development Center is I tell people all the time, I don't care if you got out of prison yesterday and filed bankruptcy the day before. We are here to help you, okay? There is no ruining that I cannot rescue you from. There are relationships that we have built over, I've been at this over 20 years. 
And this time has cultivated relationships that have drawn down on the capability to, to create and recreate situations like surety bonds, government contracting, being able to set yourself in residual income and repeated income so that these people are able and willing to be able to put their backing behind you. So if I don't trust you, I trust the bond. If I don't trust you, I trust. I am, we're here to be able to create and recreate opportunities so that people do not get into a cash tailspin, spending all type of consumerism, and then you get to a point where you're addicted to consumerism. Now what? What happens when you can't feed any addiction, ladies and gentlemen? Crime is next. Okay. And crime affects everybody no matter what. So the pouring in to the shifting of the mentality of what it is to be eligible, to be fundable, what it is for a person to be, they say, hey, you know, we have a, we have a problem with accessing capital. I said, no, you don't have a problem with accessing capital. Capital is in every one of those little buildings they call a bank. Go in the door. Go to the front uh, teller, and if you have invested in that bank, you can withdraw from that bank. So they have plenty of capital. They don't have a problem. You have access to capital. Walk in the door, okay, and you have access. What are you really saying? I am not prepared to borrow. I'm not prepared to be eligible to be invested in. I am not, my, my financials are not together. I, I talk to clients, hey, what are your financial statements? I don't know. Let me look at my bank account. But I, I, I went to the tax person last year. I had to file a loss on the business because, or I filed a loss on the business because I didn't want to have to pay taxes where you didn't want to have to borrow either because you have to be prepared to be financially worthy to have that capital on your side of the table. And that's what's gonna give you the capability to launch, expand, grow. If you're talking about having a growth mindset, prepare today for the things that you are willing to grow into. If you are willing to grow into a thing, call the things that are not as if they are. Act as if, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, be who you say that you're going to be. If you're an executive, what does an executive's finances look like? Has anybody ever looked up on FICO, my FICO, to find out what is a clean credit pro profile? We teach something called credit capacity. It's not about your score. I have people walk up to me and say, Vanessa, I have a 700 score. I said, okay. All right. Utilization rate at 100%. Um, no trades on there. You got one little credit card that's got about a $100 limit on there. And you pay that on time all day because you only charging five bucks a month. So yeah, you have no problems. So you have an immaculate record. Do you have a credit history that somebody's going to depend on? Do, does that mean that you and your 700 score can go to a Bentley lot and go borrow the money? And go borrow a Bentley, walk off of there without a down payment, not anywhere around town. They won't even give you the Bentley at all. Why is that? Because if you had more revenue coming in your life, your credit profile would reflect the revenue coming into your life. Let's take it one step higher. They have now a data aggregator. So this thing says, this is how many times you've been arrested. This is how many tickets you've ever had. This is the amount of money you made last time you filed taxes. This is the amount of money you put on your last application. This is the amount. Okay, so now they're no longer even trusting in the credit score at all. They're using data aggregators to prove about what your value is. So be cognitive of what you feed the world. Now feed them a photograph. If, I, if you work on your phony self as deep as you work on your real self, it's a two-year block to taking most people from being almost negative in credit to being successful borrowers, okay? And that comes from you first having a willingness to borrow and a want to be able to get ourselves financially structured to be a beautiful photograph so that when somebody goes and they're able to say, hey, you know what? Vanessa's got a great idea. She's got that Wealth Builders Business Development Center. They're doing all types of activities. It's classes, it's courses. They have these workshops and these people are coming out with their whole plans done and their whole, it's, it's excellent. I would love to give her $10 million. 
Does she have a, her 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 documents together so that I can tell her to send it over right now and I have a wire to her on Friday? How many people on this call would be ready for that? Well, if you're not ready, then why are we having testimony that we want to grow? Why are we speaking that we want to grow when we really don't? What are you investing into? Are you ready for this? Are you ready to be a millionaire? Are you ready to be a billionaire? Are you ready to be a real entrepreneur? Are you ready to take it there? But what are you really saying to yourself if you're not willing to put the invest the time into preparation? Okay? You owe someone. Take a little bit of something. Borrow something. Pay back something. Dedicate yourself to something. You have to be the little thing and have a microcosm of success because success breeds success, okay? Present your case to another person outside of you as if it's your money, okay? Maximizers, masterminds, you are all, everybody on this call just got a check for $100 million. It is your job to issue that $100 million to 100 companies that have a million dollars that you will issue to them each and individually. What are you looking for out of that company before you hand it to them? Is it industry? Is it personal finances? Is it their equity as a person? Is it their morals? Is it their family life? Is it the car they drive and the purse they carry? What things would make you equitable if you are asking a person to invest in you? Well, that same question happens in reverse the other way. So when a person says, hey, what do I need to present to an investor? My answer to them is, what would you want to see if you were the millionaire? Invest that capital like it's your money. Because guess what? If you're saying this, if you're calling those things that are not as if they are, that is your money, right? It's just a matter of days. You're a graduate one day and you're in a, in a diaper one day. One June 12th, you're going to be in, in diapers. One June 12th, you're going to be with a graduation. One June 12th, you're going to be with your boyfriend, girlfriend, wife. Uh, you might be a father, mother. One June 12th, you're probably going to be retiree. But guess what? These are still the same day, just evolving and evolving and evolving. If you believe that you are a wealthy person, eventually you'll be on the other side of this seat. It's either that you're gonna spend your money investing into something or someone, or you're gonna spend credits that you've built investing into someone or something. So what would you want to see if a person was coming to you on this? And that's how you will be able to determine what you need to present another person, okay? And then this is the heyday. Well, I would say it's more of the eye in the storm, okay? There is a, I mean, man, people are going out, they're enjoying themselves, they're having an excellent time, they're, they're having a good, they're, they're just, it's like the roaring 20s all over right now, okay? They're driving what they want, they're spending what they want, everybody's on Instagram, they're going out, they're having fun, they're traveling. This is a roaring time of goodness. This is the day to get your credit cards. This is the day to borrow the capital. This is the day to get your lines of credit, get your equipment financed, free up as much of your personal capital as humanly possible. Okay. Profit is built by borrowing a hundred dollars, paying 5% on that hundred dollars, gaining 20% on that $100 and returning that $105 back to the person you borrowed from. And that is the microcosm of success when it comes down to financial borrowing and repaying as an entrepreneur. That's what you're dealing with. And if you really are invested in really building imperial scenarios in your business, empires that will be able to be left to their children, your children, their children, and their children's children. You are building a mentality of the cycle of wealthiness, not the that accumulation of dollar bills.
Okay, so that's really my over, overlay when it comes down to what is going to be required, what mentality you need to have, what, what mindset we need to be sitting into. If we're really talking about having a growth mindset and borrowing capital. Now, I didn't want to get into technicalities here. We have plenty of capital options available. We deal with commercial, uh, uh, re we deal with commercial lending, we deal with investment lending we deal with lines of credit we deal with credit cards we deal with this we deal. but it's not about me trying to sell myself to you it is about you understanding that no matter what i get you if you're not prepared for the receiving it is about being prepared to receive if you are not prepared to receive the things that are able to be issued to you they will run through your world it's as if you have a cup that has no bottom and you're telling everybody thank you so much tabitha i appreciate you you're telling everybody that you want to pour in pour in everybody pour in everybody somebody buy my thing support my business come to me as an advisor come to me as a, as a suggester come to me as a consultant i do this thing but if you have no bottom and you don't believe it how are you going to think you're going to make me believe if you don't believe that you're worthy, do you understand that whenever you go in front of the funder, the funder will smell weakness like as if it's a, a wolf on a blood hunt? It's something that happens over and over in our world. Part of our situation is purely just to get the mental preparation of being prepared to fund and understanding your responsibility and how much that you are investing you are investing the good part of your life in your business right now and the core factor with saying i am not going to borrow money because i think that i'm going to waste money is like saying i don't want to borrow sand because i feel like i'm going to waste the ocean the ocean is always flowing your time is the most equitable investment you will ever give your business, okay? Cut it down. How do you cut down time, ladies and gentlemen? Capital. Do you understand what a corporation buys with its capital? The number one expenditure of any corporation in the world is human capital. They're buying time. They're buying your time. They pay you for it, you go home, and you call it employment. But what they're doing is they're using the money to multiply time. We use the money to sustain. And instead of having a circulation, we have sustaining depending on external funding sources. Instead of us learning how to circulate our energy to make it monetarily circulatory, okay? But the thing we'll do is we'll say, hey, I don't wanna spend that because uh, I can do it myself, really. So how much do you charge? Me, I charge a whole grip, okay? Because I can do a lot in a very short amount of time. And so because it's time driven in my world and I cannot multiply time, I get all the money in the world, please. We are sitting on capital resources, probably in the high billions, if not trillions of dollars of resources that we can tap backwards into at any given moment. Okay, so having capital resources is really not a limitation. What is the thing that you can never reproduce is your time. So how many places can you use money to save time? So don't tell me you don't need money. Everybody does. Money is the circulatory energy that preserves the most equitable gift in the world that you will ever have as entrepreneurs. And that is your time. Everybody stay ready to fund. Be ready to fund, get ready to fund. We are now in mid year. It's a great time to start grooming your finances. Make sure you have your financial resources ready to go. Get yourself a drop box, upload all of your tax in information, upload all of your business statements, upload all of your, uh, all of your uh, EIN designations and nonprofit resources and, and the, 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 um, 
what do you call it? the local sales tax receipts. Get yourself a suite, a kit together that gives you the capability to be ready to fund on a dime. And with that, you will be able and eligible to take care of all the opportunities that will come your way. So my whole goal today is to give you little tidbits of information that should kind of jar your mind a little bit to think a little bit differently about the lending process and think about entrepreneurship a little bit differently when it comes down to your awareness of time and how that affects it and also the awareness of money that you're borrowing as opposed to being able to utilize something that's a resource. It's like you're borrowing shoes for you to run. It's not that you're borrowing money for you to sit on, okay? So that's a little bit about me. And I just wanted to kind of go over my readiness to fund from a mental standpoint. And uh, we have some other workshops and things that'll be coming up. Um, and um, I just want to take any questions or any feedback, any comments, anything that we can talk about, I'd be happy to uh, engage. Yes. Thank you very much, Vanessa. I think it was an amazing, amazing, amazing uh, information that you give to us. And I think everybody needs to hear this. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, our power, our understanding of money, it's very important for us as entrepreneurs. And I think everybody should know about this. Uh, you know, I just want to ask, you know, like a very short, uh, uh, short and sweet question, you know, like if somebody really wants money, except the fact that they're going to prepare themselves, if you can put like very brief, like what are the paperwork that they really need to have and how they should be prepared before they're gonna come on you so they're not gonna waste your time. The what first law is the first law, the two, the the two things that I would say that would go move head to head would be a developed credit profile and cash flow. Right now, cash is king. It's the dominator in the alternative space. Most alternative funding will be either com primarily considering or specifically dealing with the cash flow of your business. Okay. And then having a credit profile that's developed, no late payments, no bankruptcies, or at least no recent bankruptcies. Um, have, and this is within a two year block, all of what I'm saying no, no collection accounts. Um, having low utilization rate under 30%, um, having a, a, a decent credit score, a high repayment uh, of credit, having at least three trade lines with $2,500 or more on your account is going to give you a representative profile. And between those two, we can do all type of alternative funding and also capital, you know, and also collateral. If you're buying a house, if you're buying equipment, if you're buying and your your actual payments that you're getting. So let's just say that you get a dump from pay, PayPal every week. Right. That's a collateralizing instrument. We can collateralize your actual revenue. Because it's coming in a certain stability or let's say you have a contract with the government, we can factor the contract because that's a collateralizing instrument. So it's cash, credit and collateral going to be the dominating three. Perfect, Vanessa. So uh, everybody, I hope that you took notes about everything that Vanessa gave. And uh, if somebody wants to reach out to you, how are they going to reach out to you if it's possible? Sure, you can put it. You can either email us at wealthbuildersbdc at gmail.com or you can go online to our website, wealthbuildersbdc.com. Before you leave, Vanessa, uh, sure. I got a question. By sure. the way, Excellent presentation, I must admit. Thought provoking as a Thank you. No, because you're speaking against, I wouldn't say against convention, because I mean, barring ages, it's been a while. However, there are a lot of people who oppose your point of view in that many business structures could bootstrap and a lot of them are not a fan of the investing realm where they raise funds, they raise funding, or they get funds from a government entity or a financial institution or private one as well to jumpstart the operations. So my question is with regards to most owners right now, who, because I know, and I'm not in the US by the way, 
much in the Caribbean. But in the US, most owners who took the um, PPA loans, a lot of them misused the money. And I'm using that example because it's recent, but my question really is, for one who really wants to borrow, are they considering getting the extra funding? What tips would you recommend that they, or what pitfalls would they avoid to make sure that it's actually effective for them? Well, number one, and I appreciate your question, Craig. Thank you for your compliments and your question. Um, the first thing that I would say is a, play, a failure to plan is a plan to fail. It's an inevitability. Okay, so if you don't walk in there, not just to say, hey, I need to borrow $10,000, but this is exactly what I'm going to do with that 10000 and this is exactly how I'm going to make sure that that money comes back, and this is what happens if this falls apart, this is what happens if that falls apart, and this is what happens if this falls apart. It gives that lender a thorough understanding that you will have considered all of the aspects that may happen with that money. Now you're walking in, not just to gather a lump sum of money for an arbitrary purpose, but to actually apply that money in rhythm to a plan for reproduction. So the first thing that I would tell a person is make a plan to reproduce with the money. Before you ever think about, you don't even know how much you wanna borrow. How do you know how much money that you need without a plan for reproduction? So we have a program here called micro lending. Okay. In fact, I have been a business liaison for many, many years with the woman who created micro lending over 20 years ago. And it was created by a woman in South Florida who was creating small loans for people who wanted to start their own little businesses. Okay. And what happens is those loans at the time were $8,000. There are people still right now with successful businesses from $8,000 investments in the 1990s. Okay. Because what happens is if I take and the micro loans entire structure, we don't, we're not, we're not um, ca caring about your credit. We don't care if you don't have any credit. We don't care if you messed up. We don't care if you went through something. What we care about is that you have a plan of reproduction. Now, there are a lot of other types of lending that you don't need to have the plan. We can get you capital from here, there, and everywhere, but it would be a failure on me as an advisor, coach, and consultant for me to advise you to come across money and do not have a plan of action on how you are going to reproduce because money without having a plan of action is a burden. That's what it will create. It, it's either going to be used to benefit or it will be used to burden. And if there is no such thing as money that will stay stagnant. Money stagnant will leak. So the only way that you can keep life in money flowing is a reproductive strategy. So the reason why a lot of people weren't using those funds equitably, and I love the fact that you pin that, is the fact that they had no prior preparation. So you're walking into, hey, I'm going to give you 20,000 extra dollars. You pay your pay your staff, pay your staff. I'm the staff. Well, let's go. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, or, or you know, I'm going to give you fifty, sixty thousand dollars in loan capital, but you have to start paying it back in two years. Find out how many people are really going to be ready to pay that back in two years without any implementation planning. They required nothing. I've never seen a disaster loan go down that fast in my entire life, and they've been there from twenty years as well. So the whole point is that, to answer your question, the biggest pitfall to avoid is to borrow money that has no type of tailoring to it, that no type of planning with it, just to be having money. If you're going to do that, do it in a line of credit. Then you can go in when you're ready, borrow when you're ready, pay back when you're ready, and then you'll have a revolving line of credit. Other than that, don't touch capital that doesn't have any type of place to go. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you very much. Amazing uh, answer. And I appreciate that one so much, uh, Vanessa. I think uh, you did a uh, great got the answer. And we appreciate it. And please, uh, you know, like, uh, thank you very much, you know, for all the information and stay with us because we're going to have the next uh, speaker is going to be uh, Mr. Ken Joshley. And I really want you to hear a little bit about him. And uh, uh mr uh, you know like we appreciate we're looking forward to get more of you so stay here tuned don't go anywhere 
Mr. Ken Joshin, I'm not going to take time to present you. I want you to go straight on the on the bread because I know you were waiting. For, so thank you.